Hi, I'm Angie, and I am jumping on the Flosstube bandwagon because there have not been enough people joining up on Flosstube in the past two, three months, right? <laughs> What's one more? That's me. I'm one more. Um, so I love to cross stitch. Obviously, this is a floss tube cross stitching channel, which means I should probably enjoy cross stitching, which I do. I have been cross stitching for a long time. I'd say about 17 years. Uh, I started cross stitching when my son was born, my oldest, and uh, started off with the small little projects and then kind of delved into larger projects. But for some strange reason, the idea of working on multiple projects at the same time did not occur to me. So I was a monogamous stitcher. It's what everybody keeps calling it, right? One project at a time until it was finished. And of course that results in taking several years for a finished product. And so of course the finished products that I have are very dear to me because they took so long to do. But then because they took so long, it also made it harder for me to choose the next project. So I was afraid of doing something big because I knew it would take years. I have a, a set of Japanese ones that I did, a, a geisha and a samurai, and combined they took me seven years to do. With what I know now, I could have finished them easily, each one in a year or less. But I didn't know what I know now, so that's okay. Um, it was, I want to say around November that I discovered the wonderful world of floss tube and it is a wonderful world and ask any floss tuber and you will see it's, it's awesome. I've, I've been binge watching so many different channels, discovering the styles of videos that I like and, um, I'm definitely hooked on some and <laughs> um, it's been a lifesaver. It's been a real lifesaver. Uh, I am, well, uh, let's, let's, a little bit about me. Uh, first and foremost, I am a military wife. I've been married to my husband for 21 years and he is currently deployed. He is on a year long assignment, far, far away from me. And I have four kids, so you will notice I am filming in my bedroom because this is the only place where I can hide away from said children in order to film a video. Otherwise, and you might still get it, pounding on the door, mom, 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 mom. It's also later at night because I wanted to wait until I could send them to bed because I'm hoping for less interruptions, but I've already had to stop filming once for a child knocking on the door. But anyway, uh, because my husband is gone, I have found myself watching movies late into the night because I have a tr I have trouble sleeping when he's not here. And so I've been staying awake really late just watching movies or watching YouTube. And it was back in November, I had, I had heard somebody on one of the channels that I normally watch, which is usually a maker channel because I dabble in woodworking. Um, but they had mentioned something about uh, diamond painting, which I'd never heard of. So I looked it up, of course, naturally, right? On YouTube. And I found a video on diamond painting, which then led to more videos on diamond painting. And then the comparison of diamond painting to cross stitching and oh my goodness. And then somebody said something about a hade, converting a hade into a diamond painting, which then made me go, what is a hade? And so I looked that up and boom, floss tube. So that is the story of how I discovered floss tube. And I've been hooked ever since. And it's been amazing and it's been so life-saving because I am putting a lot of effort into something that relaxes me, but also is great for posterity because these are projects that I can give to people. I can hang in my home to beautify it. I can do so much for this. I already have a daughter claiming some of my projects which is wonderful. And so I definitely feel like it's completely worth it. And okay, I'm just gonna admit it. It's created a little bit of a monster. Not as bad as I think some people, as far as like the amount of projects that I have going, I'm still pretty sane in that level, but I do talk a lot of cross stitch now. 
and my husband is super supportive of it, but I'm sure he's a little tired of hearing about it. So by having this floss tube channel, I can talk cross stitch and maybe not annoy the heck out of him. Win-win, I think. Um, so I guess let's go ahead and just get started with what I'm working on because I'm sure that's what most people are around for. All right, so to start with, I'm going to show you the very last monogamous project that I was working on before I, I discovered floss tube. It is also a project I don't know if I'm going to finish. Um, before the world of floss tube, my knowledge of patterns and where to get them was so small. Let's just say that anything you can buy at Joann's is what I thought was available. Um, so I have project number one that I started, um, well, I started it once in 2018 and I made a massive mistake and I had to restart it last year. So I started it the second time in April of 2019. Um, this is a dimensions, uh, there. This is a dimensions kit. I bought this, this one off Amazon. Um, it is Northern Lights, I think that's what it's called. But if you search Nor Northern Lights Dimensions Kit, uh, eventually you'll find this picture. Well, this is where I'm at now. This is a, not so bad. Uh, it looks great, actually, and it's a beautiful pattern, and I, and I love it, but unfortunately, the only time I ever work on this pattern is when I have to do something for School of Magical Stitches on Facebook, the Facebook group. But what happened with this is I got to ignore this part. Um, this right here is all page one. I got to about here and I'd done all of this when I realized that I had my fabric oriented this way. And so the pattern is too big for this direction. And I was gonna run out of fabric before I ran out of stitches to do. And so, Instead of just scrapping it, I unpicked the entire thing. Yes, I did. And I flipped it and I restarted it. And um, I would say, I, wor I mean, I worked really, really hard on this because I was still monogamous stitching. And I got this whole first page done probably by October. So not bad, about six months. And that is not working every day. And then I discovered School of Magical Stitches, which then I finished this part, got this done. But I've had, but I mean, this is a dimensions kit. And anybody who's done one of those knows that there's half stitches, there's blended threads, there's half stitches that are three threads thick, four threads thick, two threads thick. And then I discovered as I was going, I, I ran out of one of my blended threads, so I went to reblend more and discovered that when I originally blended them, I blended the wrong colors. So now I'm out of a color that I need for another thing, and this isn't DMC threads, and I've contacted the company and they are not responding. So it's gonna have to be a, take what little bit of the thread I have and try to find it. it it's a process, and I'm not sure if I wanna continue or if I wanna scrap it, start over, on better fabric and skip the whole two threads thick, three threads thick, and just kind of, I mean, I know, I know it's an artistic thing and it's supposed to give the project dimension and everything, but oh heavens, I don't, I don't know. I haven't stitched on this in well over a month because every time I look at it, it makes me mad. So it's in timeout right now, which is fine because I'm allowed to be frustrated. I just don't know if I'm gonna finish it now, which is unfortunate because it's such a good memory of Alaska. So hopefully I will get over my frustration and I'll figure out a solution to the problem that is Northern Lights. Okay, my next project, which I actually purchased way back in 2012. Um, I was looking for ways to decorate my house for Christmas better that were not super expensive because I, I tend to be kind of cheap and I just found, I found a couple patterns and I've finished one already, which you will see eventually, 
but this is one that I didn't start until December of last year, of 2019. It is another Dimensions. This is a Dimensions Gold mini kit, so it's a tiny little project, but it is full coverage, minus a couple spots where you're supposed to leave it blank to represent snowflakes. Um, but it's, and it looks like there's a ton of French knots in there too, which everybody complains about and I have not really had the chance to enjoy yet. So we will see how I feel about French knots when I get through with this one. But uh, this guy is, is tiny. I probably won't work on him again until closer to Thanksgiving time frame. But uh, I did start it in November. And this is, I mean, I haven't done much. Just. This is where I'm at. <laughs> um, it's not anything super important. I don't look at it and go, oh, I really want that done. It'll get done when it gets done and that's all right. But it's, you know, a little one. It'll be a great one for Christmas or if I if I join in the, what is it? Uh, stitch all the things she does um, on the 25th of every month. She works on a Christmas project. I can't remember what she calls it now. I'll have to see if I can remember. I just heard her say it too today on her floss tube that I was watching. Christina stitch all the things. Anyway, all right, the next one I have, this one, if you cannot tell by my decor, I'm kind of a nerd. I'm kind of a fangirl of sorts, kind of. I have a thing for Nightmare Before Christmas. I, I was a marching band nerd geek, whatever you want to call them, um, all through high school. In fact, I was so much of one that where I grew up, junior high was seventh through ninth grade and high school didn't start till 10th grade. And so when I was in ninth grade, I got special permission from the high school band director to let me join the marching band. So I was a junior high kid marching in the high school marching band because they were doing Nightmare Before Christmas music. And it was an amazing show. And you don't want me to geek out. But anyway, I've loved it ever since. And so I have a collection of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff all over my t-shirt, my hoodies. I have two blankets right now on my bed that are Nightmare Before Christmas and this isn't even all of it. And in fact, my mom sent me a coloring book for my birthday. It's, it's, it's a problem, but it's an okay problem to have because I can't even show you my husband's Star Trek ship collection because I've packed it up knowing we're gonna be moving but I wanna say there's over 300 model ships that he has that decorate his side of the bedroom. And I'm okay with it because I also like Star Trek, which you will see in a minute. But anyway, so that's me and my nerd problem. Um, I also happen to like literature. Um, I love like Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. I love it when she starts talking books along with of course cross stitching, but I, I, I like booktube as well. I love to read, I love books, and I love the magic that they bring you, and I love it when I can mix both worlds. So I've got, this is my next big, big, big project, Map of Middle Earth. Middle Earth. I got this pattern from uh, Diana70 on Etsy, and I started working on this one um, in November of 2019. This is, I believe, a 22 count. Ada, um, maybe it's an 18, I cannot remember because I was not paying attention back then because I did not know I was gonna start a floss tube. So I apologize that I don't have all the information, but I do know it's an Ada and it's either 18 or 22 count. I know that I've also bought a 22 count that says Hardanger and I'm pretty sure this is not that. Um, but it's basically, it's just a DMC. So I'm just using the Cult 4 DMC, which is, there's a lot of them. Also, just as an FYI, this is the first time I've ever done parking because when I was introduced to Floss Tube and I saw people who were parking and I was thinking, why are there threads hanging out of their fabric like that? How on earth do they know what they're doing? It was freaking me out just seeing all that. It looked so chaotic and I tried to understand the concept of it and I couldn't until and I'm just gonna throw this out there. Teresa Little Stitcher, one of the first floss tubers I saw. Amazing tutorial on how to park. And I tried it with this and I've been doing it ever since on my big project. This is how far I got so far. Um, this is one full page and I'm about, you know, what, a third of the way done with page two. Unfortunately, because I now have quite a few projects, 
I don't get to give this one as much love as I was in the beginning. And I need to maybe have it be so that there's a certain day every week that I only work on this no matter what, because I do love this. It's gonna be quite large and it's gonna, oh, it's so beautiful. Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, wonderful stories, wonderful movies. I'm so excited to have a map of Middle Earth hanging in my house. And my kids love it too. So that is Middle Earth. I love it. Um, the next one that I have is, it's hard to see on this, but this is the giant Harry Potter cell from Clouds Factory. Um, pretty much, I'll just kind of give you a quick little run through. This, each line to two lines of this represents a movie. So you've got the main cast for uh, movie one, movie two, you can see the snake, three, you can see the Dementors, um, and so on and so on. And then of course, in the border, there's lots of little little things in there too. You've got your Hogwarts, uh, the Flying Fort of Anglia, rats, cats, uh, love potions, and all of that. But it, it, it's, it, it does a very good job of trying to represent the main points of the movie. Um, so I, I started this one in January of this year, and this is on 36 count platinum Edinburgh linen. And this is one of the first projects I tried with linen. So the, all of the other ones you've seen so far are Ada. So this is the first with linen and I'm using called for DMC. Um, it does call for Krynic and I bought the Krynic. I did not like it, which I know is a popular opinion. So I ended up uh, purchasing Petite Treasure Braid instead, and I love that so much better. So, this is where I'm at. And I am changing some things up, and there's more down here. It's it's rolled up, so I'm not going to unroll it to show you, but I've got all the way down to where it said Expecto Patronum done. I've got a little bit of the border over here done. Not much. But um, some of the things that I'm changing is I added Fox in here because Fox was not on the pattern. Um, I added the Hogwarts Express and the castle. And all of these are thanks to some wonderful people willing to share their ideas on the Giant Harry Potter cell Facebook page. Um, they shared pictures and said, hey, here's how I changed it. If you can chart it off my picture, go for it. Uh, I've got the Devil's Snare, which is not in the pattern, the Quidditch hoops and the Quidditch supplies. Um, the Snitch was in the pattern, but all of this was not. There's a few more things I'm gonna add later on towards the bottom, but for the most part, I just felt like those were some things that for sure, Fluffy here was not in the pattern. She's not done yet either. I've gotta finish with the back stitching, but I wanted to represent a lot of the points that are not represented. You know, they can't even start to find the, um, the Sorcerer's Stone without Fluffy and the Devil's Snare. You could go crazy trying to add things though, but this is where I'm at with that one. Um, this one's going on break for a while because I also have a pillow version of this that's smaller and condensed that I'm making for gifts and that's part of my uh, stitch mania, which I'm sure will be another video, but that's where I'm at with this. All right, so uh, my next project is, remember I told you I was a nerd, my whole family, we're all nerds, but this one is the uh, Star Trek pillow sampler. This is from Clouds Factory. I have two of these actually. I have the one with Spock that I am making as a gift for my mom. And then I have one that it doesn't have Spock, it has Starships. And that one I'm making for my husband. Uh, these ones are on 28 count Cashel, Cash, Cashel, Cashel linen. Um, and it is the called for DMC. This is a fantastic linen, by the way, I'll show you in a minute. Um, and I started this in January of this year. So, uh, this is on my scroll frame right now, and um, I'm pretty impressed, so I'm just gonna kinda scroll it down for you, but this is where I'm at, so I've just done all of this up to about here. So, I mean, you can't see all of it in one anymore because we are now at a point where 
it gets rolled up into the frames. But this is where I'm at and I love it and I love this linen. I have another project with another kind of linen that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, just their generic linen that they sell. And I am not a fan of it because it warps and stretches really bad. And this one is pretty stiff and while it does stretch a little bit, it doesn't warp nearly as much as the other linens. So, and this one looks a lot crisper, which I like. So anyway, that is, that is Star Trek. And that is part of my Stitch Mania. And I will talk a little bit more about Stitch Mania in another video. I know I'm a little late in the game, but you can forgive me because this is all new to me. Uh, the last whip that I have currently, it will change by tomorrow, is what I'm calling wedding birds because it doesn't actually have a name. It's just like birds in the tree or the description. But this is a wedding present for a friend of mine. And this is by Nikki's, Nikki Patterns, Nikki Pattern, Modern Cross Stitch Patterns on Etsy. And I picked this up and started this in April, the beginning of April. And I just bought a basic black Ada um, because I thought it would pop with the white and the blue on the black. So this is where I'm at. All I have left is the branch off here and it has a set of leaves up here and a couple more leaves right there. And I am finished with this bad boy and I'm excited because the wedding is three weeks away. So I am way on top of this. In fact, I will be finished with this tonight. So excited. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's not very big, but it's, it's taken me a few weeks to, to get this because it's, I mean, it's a lot of monotonous stitching with just white and blue, but it's pretty and I like it. So, and that will be my first finish for Stitch Mania when I'm done. Um, so that's me. <laughs> that's me. I, um, I guess I will just say that I, I love watching Floss 2. I've had a great time. I've really, I found, first of all, a lot of patterns. Thank you very much. One of the patterns that I just finished that you'll see later, uh, Wacky Witches and Stitches, I actually found as I was watching Michelle Bendy Stitchy because she has it on her wall and I was lucky enough that in the particular video I was watching, she mentioned it. And so I immediately went on to Cloud's Factory, bought it, and then found all the other things and bought them too. So I've been told that floss, floss tubers are enablers and I would agree. Um, I have some Mirabilia's, which will be coming up, which I'm excited about, thanks to floss tube. And um, to thanks, mainly thanks to virtual stitchers because they keep showing off their mirabilias and they're pretty. <laughs> um, but I, I've really enjoyed watching Michelle Bendy Stitchy, uh, Christine at Stitch All the Things, Teresa Little Stitcher, which I've mentioned before. Um, oh goodness, who else? Who else have I been watching? Jen Lee, love Jen Lee's videos, love them. Um, I tried so hard to participate in the latest 24 hours of cross stitch, but unfortunately my children actually needed me to take care of them. And since I am the only adult in the house, I kind of had to. And so as much as I tried, I think I managed about 10 hours. I mainly worked on the wedding birds and got a bunch of that done, which is not at all what I wanted to do. I, I had a, an idea in my head and it didn't work, which, you know, it's gonna happen, but I did tell my husband that when he gets home and then next time there's a 24 hour cross stitch, I'm either going to a hotel to do it or he's just gonna have to leave me alone and take care of the kids. And he agreed because he's gonna owe me big time, right? <laughs> but um, I really, I do have plans for Stitch Mania that I really hope that I can accomplish, but we shall see. So anyway, this is me. Um, it's very weird talking to myself but I think that I'll get better at it as I go. And I hope that you like the video. And if you do, leave me a comment because I'd love to hear it. And if you don't, then you don't have to watch because that's 
the beauty of it, right? You don't watch what you don't like. I know there are a ton of other floss tubers that I watch, um, but their names are escaping me at the moment. So uh, there are so many new ones. There are so many awesome ones and I'm, I binge watch and I get, I, I love them. So um, if I didn't mention your name, I probably did watch you and I probably did like you because I don't think there's a single one out there that I haven't loved as I watched. So anyway, um, I have a whole bunch of stuff that's supposed to be coming in the mail soon, so I cannot wait. I can't, I can't progress with Stitch Mania until it does. And I ordered it so many weeks ago in hopes that it would get here in time. It hasn't yet, but I know it'll be here any day. And when it is, I can't wait to share with you what it is. I'm so excited. But I am going to head to bed because I've already had three interruptions. You just didn't hear them because I've edited, edited them out. And I'm likely to have more and I'd like to go to bed and my husband is actually texting me right now too so that is how it that that's how my life goes but thanks for watching and I hope everybody has a wonderful evening or day depending on what time you're watching this have a good one